Hello, this is the promised summary lecture on subject copyright and media law at Vysoká škola finanční a správní university. Due to the fact that we didn't have a proper lectures uh, due to the coronavirus situation and due to the fact that also the test uh, will be held online, uh, I offered you this video that will summarize the most important questions from our subject, which is copyright, and in the second part media law, uh, which will be press law, broadcasting law and um, advertisement law. I would like to raise uh, attention to the most important slides uh, from the PowerPoint presentation that I uploaded into the information system. And um, in the end, we are going to, uh, or I'm going to ask you some of the questions uh, that might be a part of the test. In the real end of this video, you can see the sample questions for the multiple choice test. So let's start with the PowerPoint presentation, the most important parts. In respect of copyright, uh, we need to deal with the legislation. Uh, as mentioned, the Constitution and uh, Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms are the most important acts in the Czech Republic. However, all the rights um, um, that are specified are in the Civil Code. Uh, when we are uh, talking about copyright, then it is uh, copyright and rights related to Copyright Act. Uh, we were also talking about further IP institutes such as trademarks, uh, patents, etc. These are also uh, institutes that are in, in a specific act such as Act on Trademarks. Uh, when we are talking about media law, the most important acts are Broadcasting Act, the Press Act, Advertisement Act, Consumer Protection Act or Data Protection Act, GDPR. We are going to also talk or we, we talked about EU directives and regulations. All these acts are available in English, they are uploaded in information system or you can see that online. When we are talking about copyright issues, so we need to define especially the author's work. Uh, what is author's work? It's a literary work or any other work of art or scientific work that must be unique and expressed. If it's not unique or it's not expressed, it's not copyright protected author's work. Uh, we were discussing the examples for literary work. It's, it's obviously book uh, as the most um, common example. Any other work of art, it can be sculpture, painting or a scientific work. Uh, we were talking what kinds of rights you have if you create the uh, copyright protected work. And there are two different types of rights. First, there are moral rights. It's right to decide to make the work public, right to claim authorship, right to the unavailability of his or her work, and after the death of the author, use in a way which shall not detract from its value, and also it's the right to put the name of the author on, on the author's work, so the author must be indicated. These rights, moral rights, last forever. In contrary, economic rights is, for example, right to use a work in a way to reproduce it, reprint it, distribute it, rent it, lend it, exhibit. These economic rights get you, get you money and they do not last forever but they last for the life of the author and 70 years after the death. How you can transfer these rights? You can use it by yourself or you can license these rights to a third person. The license contract is stipulated in the civil code and the definition is that the author grants authorization to the licensee to exercise the right to use the work in specific ways or in all ways of use to a limited or unlimited extent. And the licensee agrees, unless agreed otherwise, to remunerate the author. So the key words is that you give some right to use, you need to specify it, to a limited or unlimited extent and for money, for some remuneration. 
you need to define quantity how how much you would like to for example how many copies you would like to reprint location whether it's going to be in Czech Republic or in EU or other states look and uh, that's the location scope and time scope for a year for five years ten years we were talking about two types of um, license agreement non-exclusive and exclusive license exclusive license the author may not grant a license to any third party and the author is refrained from exercising the right to use the work in the same way to which he granted the license it means that you probably get much more money but you cannot give the same license to a third person or exercises by yourself when we were talking about intellectual property we were talking about copyright uh, there are also rights related to copyright such as right of performer broadcaster etc we then moved to other ip institutes and uh, one of the most important is trademark uh, it's a designation capable of graphical representation it consists especially of words letters numbers colors drawings of product shapes or packages uh, also celebrity are using to uh, using trademark for, to protect their names, slogan, logo. And it serves to distinguish goods or services on the market. We were talking that you can register trademark on the national level, EU level or international level. Please have a look how the procedure looks like. We then were talking about patent, industrial design rights, geographical indication of origin. Because these are very specific IP institutes, don't go into detail. I don't think that you're going to register a patent uh, and if so, you're going to ask specialists on doing this. When we were talking about industrial design rights, if you're going to work in this uh, kind of area of business, you at least know that it belongs to intellectual property. Where are the sources you can study? Uh, we then were talking about databases as an IP um, institute and we were discussing there are two types of databases first database that is uh, protected by copyright but it must be unique uh, or it's a sui generis database uh, that gives you a right for protection for 15 years from uh, creation um, under the condition that you put a quantitatively or qualitatively substantial investment in obtaining verification or presentation of the content. There is a EU directive on database protection. From copyright we were moving slowly to media law and we were discussing personality rights, meaning that also a person, usually a celebrity, has rights, um, a monitor right uh, in his or her name, picture, and if you are using it for a commercial business, for advertisement, you need to pay for, for usage. And if you are not asking for permission, you might be able to uh, be sued for unjust enrichment, which, will, which is uh, in the similar way as it was in copyright. In copyright, if you infringe uh, copyright protected work, um, you can ask for remuneration for... Uh, damages uh, for apologies and moral rights but also uh, for unjust enrichment and that's the same uh, personal rights are stated in a civil code um, there is a general clause with demonstrative listing of rights especially its name privacy honor um, expression of personal nature dignity uh, uh, family life but also health because we were talking about media and how media can use or misuse your personal rights uh, the most important notion for that is in contrary to personal rights is freedom of speech it's uh, the same and very important right that you need to what will be more important whether a personal rights or freedom of speech so here are criteria listed um, also from uh, European Court of Human Rights uh, decisions as a contribution to general interest whether uh, if you for example took a picture of some celebrity lying on the on his or her garden 
whether there was any general interest in knowing that, uh, whether this person uh, was famous, uh, so the subject of the news, uh, his or her role, function, nature, previous behavior, so if the celebrity was um, uh, asking newspaper to write daily about uh, his or her privacy, then definitely um, the celebrity somehow weakened his uh, position. Um, also important is to know the content, scope and form of the publication, impact of the publication and circumstances of taking the pictures. This means if, if the picture was taken by, by paparazzi or not. In respect of copyright uh, infringement, personal rights infringement, um, this infringement can happen in a real world but also online and to get uh, liability of people who infringed your rights online we had to we have to somehow um, define who is liable for what and this helps uh, to to solve the e-commerce directive um, it shows the exemption and immunity and this kind of exemption immunity depends on the precise type uh, and activity of the ISP. So there are three types of ISPs, uh, mere transmission, caching and hosting type. Um, we were mostly talking about the hosting uh, type ISP, uh, let's say website, uh, social media, that are most uh, liable for the content. If you cannot find a person who really infringe your rights, for example, um, in, in some comments under the article on very um, famous uh, newspaper uh, that is uh, creating online discussion and you cannot find the person who defamed you then immediately the um, uh, website is liable if they do not um, erase it immediately if you do not delete delete the defamatory or um, uh, infringement in respect of copyright uh, when we are talking about uh, media, uh, we were talking about the, one of the oldest form of uh, um, media, which, which is uh, press. In Czech Republic, um, press is regulated by the Press Act. Uh, we are dividing between periodical and non-periodical publication. Periodical must be issued at least twice a year. Uh, it's newspaper, magazine, uh, but for example, book is non-periodical publication. When we are talking about periodical publication, um, we need to get from Ministry of Culture registration number. Uh, so we were talking about registration process. You get um, international standard serial number in respect of book is ISBN. Uh, we were talking about publisher's application and here the strict liability for the content. We only were talking that a publisher is not liable for the advertisement content. Uh, each copy uh, of the newspaper has to have the identification information we were talking about. Uh, in respect of uh, non-periodic publication, here um, you, you can see the prescribed obligatory information which is definitely name of the author, publisher, business name of the printing company, year of the first issue. Um, there's also duty to have a statutory copy of the book and offering duty to library. Uh, the Press Act has two specific um, issues, so you do not immediately have to go to court and sue for defamation. There is a right to reply. Uh, if you demand the right to reply, uh, you should write in written within 30 days from the publication of the article or information and you can ask that they are going to publish in the same way your statement about the situation, about the information presented. Uh, if it was, for example, misleading statement, you need to specify how it was misleading and how it injured you. If the newspaper is not going to print the right to reply, you can sue for that or you directly sue for personal rights infringement. A second right that is connected with um, press law is the right to subsequent statement. Uh, if periodical pu press publishes information about criminal or, or administrative procedure regarding a person who is identified, the publisher has to uh, publish also the final outcome of the legal proceedings. It means that if you are charged uh, for two years imprisonment and the appeal court change it for just two months, 
then definitely you have a right to um, ask the press to write new information. In respect of advertisement, uh, I raised your attention to Advertisement Regulation Act uh, that regulates the advertisement in general and also the most important um, products such as alcohol, tobacco, guns, uh, funeral, uh, nutrition for children, etc. Uh, also, the broadcasting act is important in respect of teleshopping sponsorships, uh, but it also regulates the television advertisement. Uh, and the new civil code uh, in, um, includes unfair competition rules and consumer rights in general. Uh, when we are talking about the press law the, and uh, other forms of uh, printed um, advertisement, it's not regulated. Um, there is a self-regulatory body council for advertisement. They do not file any fines. Um, they also have a voluntary membership you can see and you can visit their website. However, there are state regulators, um, they, they, are, they can issue fines for you. It can be a municipal body, municipal hall, uh, state organization departments such as veterinary offices, food industry office, hygienist health office or uh, office that controls the drugs and medical products. So be very careful if you are going to put some new product on the market. You need to know whether it is in compliance to the Advertisement Regulation Act uh, and uh, definitely ask this specific state organization whether your uh, product is capable of being um, produced and sold on the Czech market. Of course, almost each product has uh, EU regulation or a directive that deals with the details, uh, such as cosmetic products, uh, food products, but you need to be very, very sure. And in respect of advertisement, follow the basic rules. Uh, when we move to broadcasting law, uh, we, we have to know the rights and obligation of Council for Radio and Television Broadcasting. They monitor uh, program content and commercial communication, as was discussed, teleshopping, commercial communication and sponsorship. Uh, also, they monitor whether the program is free, independent, so you cannot promote war or show brutal or otherwise inhuman behavior, um, arouse hatred for reasons related to gender, race, color, etc. In respect of advertisement, uh, advertisement that contain vulgarism or swearing, um, they can be only broadcast between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, you cannot um, um, broadcast anything with subliminal communications. So um, there are a list of rights and obligations that you need to follow if you are a broadcaster and the council can give you a fine for this. Uh, we were also talking about product placement, which is uh, allowed in Czech Republic under following uh, requirements. The content and scheduling shall not be influenced in such a way as to affect the editorial responsibility and independence. Um, the product placement should not directly encourage the purchase or rental of goods and um, uh, the broadcaster should not give undue prominence to the product in question. Uh, if you would like to use product placement in broadcasting, you need to notify the public via PP sign. When we are talking about advertisement, it's very important that you think about consumer rights, um, which are stated in civil code, but also in Consumer Act. Uh, there are deceptive trade practices, uh, for example, if your uh, advertisement product um, has incorrect information or important information in itself is true but it misleads the public consumer. Uh, if you fail to provide important information, so these are practices, trade practices that are deceptive and are not allowed, are illegal. Also aggressive trade practices are illegal if you force somebody to, to purchase your product. Uh, if you're if in taking account of all the circumstances, the decision is through harassment or coercion. So, 
I also highlight uh, some most frequent mistakes of teleshopping companies if you are, for example, not stated correct price, uh, if price on the TV screen is not the same as on a website, or promotion or sale is misleading. So these information uh, or this, this kind of uh, problems can um, lead to fines from state bodies. When we are not talking about consumer, but we are talking about the relationship between business and business, unfair competition rules are very important for you to know. It's in civil code. It's misleading advertis uh, advertising. It's misleading identification of goods and services. If you, if you say that this product comes from France, it does not. It's misleading, definitely. If you're creating a likelihood of confusion, so if you if you if your product is very similar in very similar packages, one that has already reputation, um, free riding on reputation, bribery, disparaging a competitor, comparative advertisement is allowed in Czech Republic, but under, under certain rules. And if you do not follow these rules, it's unfair competition. For example, if you do not compare the same products, if you compare a characteristic that is not compar comparable. Then breach of business secret is unfair competition and marketing harassment definitely as well. So uh, these were slides that are um, quite uh, important for you to, to know, to study. Uh, and I highlighted it because it is the most important part of uh, the subject if you are going to go into practice. Also, theoretically, you can study even more, but if you are going to work in marketing uh, agencies, in marketing departments, you need to know uh, where the potential problems are and where you can find a solution. So when we are now, we are moving to a second part, which is the summary questions. So in respect of uh, copyright, uh, I will definitely ask what works attract copyright protection and you are going to give me the definition that must be unique, expressed, it's a literary work, any art of uh, any work of art or scientific work. Who owns the copyright? It's a natural person. Uh, distinction between moral and economic rights, um, if you can uh, somehow tell me examples of moral rights and economic rights, I would be happy. Also, if you can tell me the duration that it, moral rights are forever and economic rights for some specific period of time, for the li duration of life and 70 years after death. And what are remedies for the infringement? For example, damages, unjust enrichment, apology, or dis destroying of the goods that, are infrin that infringe copyright. Um, in respect of trademark, I can ask what is a trademark, how you can define it. Um, whether, for example, it's a word, um, 3D, um, shape, etc. Um, what criteria must trademark um, have to be able to be registered? So it must be um, new, uh, there, it, it cannot um, mislead the public, it has to follow public morals, um, and if you are having a, some general logo, etc., uh, it cannot be registered. There, there were a few questions, but it's not so important who can bring opposition, who, what is revocation. So we were talking that if you are not using trademark, um, uh, then this trademark uh, can be revoked. Uh, opposition can bring somebody who thinks that your new trademark can inf infringe already existed trademark. Now, how long is the period of protection? Yeah. Please have a look into slides. Um, what is CTM? It's a community trademark for, for the European Union protection. Uh, what protects drugs? For example, patents. What protects the shape and material of good utility model or, or design? When we are talking about database, um, what are criteria for protection of databases? under the copyright notion, so it must be unique ex expressed. Um, where is your generous database stated? Uh, what is the difference between database protected by copyright and sui generis database? And duration of protection in both uh, cases. Where is the personal protection stated in civil code? And what is image rights? Uh, right, it's a right 
that nobody can take a picture without your consent and share it without your consent. What is publicity right? It means uh, it's a right that uh, you have some economic value in your personal rights. When I'm going to ask what is right to reply or right to subsequent statement, you can find it in a press act, but also in broadcasting act. Um, what is ISSN? You, you can uh, go back to press uh, law issues and see it. Uh, what are obligatory information stated in non-periodical publication and periodical publication? So at least uh, a few, please state. Uh, but it's not so. It's not so difficult. Uh, who is liable for the article in the newspaper? It's publisher only. Uh, very rarely uh, liable is the um, re newspaper a journalist, uh, but it must be in very specific circumstances, for example, if he or she has their own interest and uh, hide it um, to, to the publisher. Conditions for citation of third party, it means that uh, you are still liable uh, even if you, for example, print the interview with somebody and uh, this person defames somebody else. So what kind of obligation the broadcaster has in respect of commercial communication? You can divide what the commercial communication in respect of teleshopping, commercial communication and sponsorship has. Um, you go back to advertising act. Uh, who grants the license to broadcast? Again, Council for Radio and Television Broadcasting. What is objective reporting and conditions? I think it's quite clear uh, that uh, the news um, uh, in TV must be balanced, that you have to give both sides a, um, space to express their views. Uh, who is liable for broadcasting? Definitely broadcaster. What is product placement and what are the conditions uh, to use the product placement in broadcasting? I, I already mentioned and you can see it in slides. So uh, again, here are possible questions that can be asked. Uh, in a form of multiple choice question, I'm not going to ask you the open question. So this is just a lead for you what to look at. What is WIPO? Uh, definitely the uh, World Intellectual Property Organization is a good source for you to study. Uh, here you have a summary for license agreement. We didn't have a proper uh, uh, lectures um, at university, so we were not able to really draw the license agreement. Um, but uh, at least uh, during the online lectures, we were able to discuss uh, how the license agreement looks like, what are the important parts. So definitely you need to... Um, notify uh, who is who are the parties, what is the subject matter of the license, what kind of uh, work you are licensing, uh, the scope of use, so you define the economic rights and for how much. Uh, so um, we're talking about termination and withdrawal from, from the contract. Uh, so definitely have a look on some sample of license agreement that I uploaded. So finally I come to the end and here are the summary um, examples how the test can look like. So uh, only one answer will be correct, so don't worry. Uh, what is not, for example, copyright protected work, you can see whether it's software receipt or photo, so have a look. I think uh, everything, uh, every answer you can see in the slides. In the slides, um, another example: what doesn't belong to the moral rights? The champagne wine is copyright so work, cop patent, geographic den denomination. Uh, Maybe the questions uh, are not, you know, raised properly, but we are talking about copyright and media law, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, ask you the, the probably the, the best um, answer will be the champagne wine is alcohol. So um, have a look, please, and if you are really going to have any question, just uh, write me. But I suppose everything is in information system. Uh, I spoke a lot on. In the online lectures, and the test is not going to be to be so difficult. 
if you don't want to study or it's not going to be enough for you the slides will be not enough I hope you're having the um, fundamentals of marketing law and intellectual property law uh, textbook we we were writing with uh, my colleague um, so this book is available at uh, university you can or hopefully you can download it uh, from the university archive so uh, here are study sources and other sources as mentioned at the beginning of the lecture are the legislation acts um, you are having all my contact details but if you are having any questions before we uh, start the test uh, just write me an email so thank you for attention um, I hope it will it was enough uh, I promise half an hour and it's already done so uh, good luck with the test and um, see you soon bye